Hello, I'm Namakao Mukelawai. Welcome to IDC Insights. This is a program that profiles the Industrial Development Corporation's investments and subsidiaries in the group. Today we profile a subsidiary and also a project. We begin with Mpulungu Harbour Corporation. This is Zambia's only water-based port and a facilitator of trade with the Great Lakes region. It is also the largest employer in Mpulungu district. Mpulungu Harbour is a direct link to the Great Lakes region. In the east is Tanzania, the west is DR Congo, and north is Burundi. Now, in 1988, Mpulungu Harbour was established. Ten years later, it became a limited company, Mpulungu Harbour Corporation Limited. And now, it is under the IDC. Now, as a shareholder, the IDC has plans to modernize the harbour so that it can handle more cargo and passenger traffic. Tucked in the southern tip of Lake Tanganyika in Mpulungu District, Northern Province, is Mpulungu Harbour Corporation. The harbour is currently the only water-based port in Zambia. It is an essential gateway for logistics and a facilitator of trading activities in the region. Mpulungu Harbour is uh, essentially in a logistics business. We are facilitating uh, cargo movement. So we, we handle cargo that uh, leaves the country or transits through Zambia into the Great Lakes region. So the Great Lakes region, essentially you're talking of Burundi, uh, you're talking of uh, DRC, Eastern DRC, and you're talking of Tanzania. But this region, of course, extends further beyond that. We have Rwanda, uh, it goes all the way to South Sudan. We are essentially handling cargo uh, that we are exporting into the Great Lakes region, and as well as we facilitate uh, cargo that uh, is to be received from the Great Lakes region. Uh, that's, uh, that's the strategic importance of, uh, of Mpulungu Harbour. Many studies have, 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 have taken place around uh, the opportunity uh, of uh, Lake Tanganyika. Uh, it stretches almost 700 kilometers, uh, bordering Burundi on the northern end. Um, now, we are evacuating quite a lot of cargo that is destined to, to Burundi and uh, to that effect we handle and we are receiving uh, vessels and ships that are coming in to pick up uh, such cargo. Unfortunately, we do not have any vessels uh, of our own as a country that participate in this particular uh, business of cargo evacuation. And also the, the other unfortunate bit is that we are mostly handling cargo that is being exported outside of Zambia. There's almost zero cargo that is incoming uh, from the Great Lakes region. Part of our uh, mandate and what we are trying to do is to turn this picture around. Uh, as, 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 as a start, we are looking to go into the, uh, the vessel uh, business. The port redevelopment plans includes expansion of the passenger quay that will cater for passenger vessels. Historically, passenger traffic varied between 4,000 and 17,000 passengers per year. But after the discontinuation of the only passenger vessel, part of the passenger traffic has shifted to smaller private vessels. Uh, you might know there used to be SS Liemba, which has uh, been a vessel on these waters. Uh, it's, it's over 100 years old and it has been aground since uh, about 2018. It hasn't been moving. That leaves an opportunity for a movement of passengers. So currently what you get is passengers actually are using a lot of unsafe uh, means to, uh, to move across uh, the waters. So the, the, the opportunity for us to actually participate in this area is huge. And as in Pulungo Harbour, what we are looking to do uh, with uh, what IDC is supporting us to, uh, to achieve is how do we uh, procure these vessels. The, the plans that we have is that these vessels will be built right here at Mpulungo Harbour. So part of our, our future uh, outlook is that we'll be able to actually build uh, vessels right here. So we are looking for funding that is essentially going to help us set up a, a shipyard right here at Mpulungo Harbour. With this shipyard, of course, means that we will create so many jobs uh, around uh, Mpulungo. But also added to that is that there is no capacity on the lake currently 
to maintain or repair vessels or even to actually build uh, vessels. So when we have a shipyard here, we'll of course be able to service not only local Zambia uh, market, but also all the vessels that are, uh, are running on the, on, the, on, on the waters, we'll be able to service, to maintain, or indeed to build uh, any, any new vessels that anyone might, uh, might actually be looking to, uh, to, to buy. What is the portfolio of cargo that is exported out of Mpulunga Harbour? Currently, our, uh, we, we have a very narrow portfolio of cargo that we're handling. We're handling mainly three types of cargo. It's sugar, it's uh, cement, and it's clinker. Um, uh, the clinker is essentially feeding into uh, Burundi cement uh, company. Uh, they are using that uh, as a base material for production of cement locally and we are handling mostly cement that is uh, coming out of uh, Lafarge. Uh, then we handle sugar, it's a, the, the next biggest uh, uh, product that we are handling. And sugar is also destined for mostly Burundi and the Eastern DRC, and cement which mostly goes to, uh, to Burundi. Those are the main uh, cargo products that probably account for 90% uh, to 95% of all cargo that we are actually handling. The first wharf of the port was constructed in the 1930s, followed by incremental development to the port infrastructure to what it is today. However, the port in its current state cannot meet the trade demand from across the lake. And so, in a joint effort with Mpulungu Harbour Corporation Management, the IDC is currently addressing the operating bottlenecks to optimize the performance of the port. This is including redevelopment of the port and its surrounding infrastructure. The conversation about modernizing of the harbour has been ongoing for quite a while. Uh, I am very upbeat now, I think with the involvement of uh, IDC's support uh, of what uh, strides we are making towards uh, uh, moving uh, to financial closure around the funding that we require to, uh, to, to upgrade the harbour and modernize it. Um, it has essentially remained in, 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 in the state that it is uh, for quite a long time. And that also create, it has created a bit of a problem because it's, it's huge bottlenecks. Firstly, in the design of the, uh, the port itself, it's completely inefficient the way that in the layout of the port. Uh, the berthing capacity that we have is very limited. Uh, we only have about 20 meters of uh, berthing capacity. We are looking for funds that is going to extend the bathing capacity to somewhat 200 uh, meters, which will enable us to load multiple vessels at a time, which means that our port can operate efficiently and be able to, uh, to turn around the vessels that call on the port quicker. And we'll see our uh, almost 18,000 metric tons that we currently handle grow to uh, anything beyond that. Uh, but first we have to remove the bottlenecks and that is why we are looking to expand uh, the port. What are some of the notable changes that have happened here since Mpulungu Harbour became a member of the IDC group of companies? It's essentially the transformation agenda that we have uh, as Mpulungu uh, Harbour Corporation. We are looking to create an organization that is resilient, robust, as well as efficient uh, and relevant both to government, uh, but as well as to the community that we uh, uh, we're in, Mpulungu Harbour Corporation is uh, a major uh, player in the economy of of Mpulungu. Um, we are the biggest employer, um, and with the plans and support that we have with IDC to number one transform this organisation, uh, so that we are able to. Uh, sustain our own operations so that we are also able to to add even to the national coffers uh, by way of uh, of dividends and that is our target uh, but most importantly so that we are able to be relevant to the uh, community in Impulungu. like I said we are the biggest employer in, in Impulungu. the only way that our relevance remains is if we create a resilient and sustained uh, organization. And thanks to, to IDC and their push for us to transform this organization, we are making strides uh, towards uh, achieving uh, all these uh, goals.
The IDC is expected to reach financial close by the end of this year for the expansion program. Now, to increase its exposure in the manufacturing space, the IDC is setting up multi-food processing plants in Winilonga and in Katete. Today, our journey takes us to Northwestern Province, the home of the famous Zambian pineapple. What comes into your mind when you see this fruit? Juice, fruit, or a location? Now, if you thought about Northwestern Province, and in particular Mwinilonga, then you're right. Now, many, many years ago, here in uh, Northwestern Province, and in particular in Mwinilonga, there was a food processing company called Mwinilonga Cannery. Now, after 1991, the factory closed, and it left a lot of farmers stranded, literally stranded, with no market and limited resources, to capitalize or recapitalize their fields in order to grow more fruit. Fast forward to 2020, IDC comes on the scene. IDC is now setting up another food processing company called Kaleni Hills. Now the posture of the IDC is to add value to what local endowments are in a particular area. And in this area, Northwestern province, the endowment is, you guessed it, pineapple. The pineapple is an edible fruit which has a short stalky stem with tough waxy leaves. The pineapple is indigenous to South America where it has been cultivated for many centuries. It is possibly the third most important tropical fruit in world production. Over the years, pineapple has been introduced in greenhouses and many tropical plantations across the world including Zambia. His Royal Highness Senior Chief Kanongesha narrates how the first pineapple made its way to northwestern province. Mr. Peter Fisher, the present grandson of the water fisher, are the ones that brought the pineapple. In 1914, that's where he got it from Angola, in an area called Sandoa. And Sol Lunda has also named this pineapple in a new name we called Sandua. And when this pineapple was brought by these missionaries, they had one of their garden boys, uh, Samahina. That's where he got it. And then when he came here, he gave it to one of his garden boys known as Kanganja, to the present seeds that we have now. So, the, so as that when they multiplied in Ikelenge district, people tasted it approved it was better than honey. In 1976, that's when Dr. David Kaunda, the first Republican of Zambia, decided to roll out factories in remote areas so that there will be additional value to the crop. And he, for us, we're fortunately, he opened a pineapple factory. And uh, when it closed in 1991, it was very unfortunate people were not ready because of uh, lacking of capital money to run the project. Most people lost employment. Your Royal Highness, uh, Highness, you are very well known for your love for the people and, uh, and how you want to alleviate poverty. You have also partnered with the IDC in the sense that uh, you've given them some land and also you have encouraged your, your people to join the Outgrower Scheme. Please explain more about this vision and how you decided to embrace this Outgrower Scheme. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, by opening this, uh, uh, reviving this pineapple factory in Mwenlunga district, uh, for me, I'm absolutely convinced that uh, more employment will be created. And many young, young uh, school leavers who have a skill to learn how to grow pineapple, even do more than what we have done, because more research is needed. I've not only given uh, 100 hectares of land, I've also given them more than 250 hectares of land as a usage land, where they'll be doing research and other activities.
In 2011, Ikelenge separated from the larger Mwinilunga district. It is here in the new Ikelenge district where most of the pineapples are grown. Uh, Ikelenge is the, is the main uh, belt area for the production of pineapples uh, in, the, in the whole of northwestern province. Uh, one of the reasons is that um, Ikelenge stands on a higher altitude which makes it more favorable for pineapple production because pineapple production requires that the plant is exposed to the sun for a longer period of time and uh, that's what makes these pineapples very sweet and also if they are not exposed to the sun for more than 12 hours they will taste sourish. The Industrial Development Corporation is setting up uh, Kaleni Hills uh, Food Processing Company in Minelonga where they will be the off-takers of the produce and uh, one of the strategies is that they're going to implement an outgrower scheme. Uh, what kind of support are you going to provide to the IDC in relation to this uh, project? I think our role will be to ensure that one, we provide effectively the technologies that farmers need to ensure that they produce more fruits within a reasonable piece of land. Secondly, we are going to ensure that um, uh, our farmers uh, um, become more focused in what they are producing because uh, of late they reduced on production because we used to experience about 40% uh, loss in terms of post-harvest uh, losses. They were taking a bit of time to get the fruit to find the customers. Now that the factory is here, they, they are likely now to start increasing on their uh, production in terms of the land size that they have dedicated for production. And also in the same vein, we will try as much as possible to work with the IEDC to ensure that their operations become smooth and uh, all the challenges that they may encounter are addressed. And also on the part of our farmers, we encourage them to produce more and we provide more trainings and the, uh, extension services so that our farmers pro produce the right kind of food, the right quality and the right quantity so that we can meet the demand for the factory. It is in Ikelenge where we find the oldest and largest pineapple farmers. Today we meet Mr. Sylvain Sameta, a pineapple farmer who has continued to grow pineapples despite losing a reliable market after the closure of the Mwinilunga pineapple cannery. Uh -huh. uh, tell us the history of uh, your farming uh, of pineapples. Uh, when did you start? Uh, who were you supplying at the time? Uh, I started the pineapple farming in 1985. And by that time, we were, so I was supplying my pineapple to my Mwenronga Canary factory. By that time when I was supplying my pineapples to Mwenunga Canary, I had no challenges of pineapple selling. Mm -hmm. It was profitable. Uh, it was giving me a lot of income to my pineapple family. Now from there, uh, the canary was closed in 1991. Now when the canary was closed in 1991, it's when we faced a lot of challenges where to sell our pineapples. Mm -hmm. We had no market uh, by that time. We were just lying from traders, the customers from Cobra Belt to come and buy some little mm. pineapples from my farm. And most of the my pineapples were just getting to waste because I had no uh, customers who could come and buy in, in big bulk to my farm. That was the only challenge that I was facing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, Otherwise, by that time, oh, no, we had no challenges, and the uh, pineapples were not rotting, and I was making profit most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, now, um, who are you supplying? You've talked about uh, the copper belt. Um, um, they are the ones who, most of the times, so the people in the copper belt are the ones who come and buy, isn't it? Um, so, how is business now? Uh, business now uh, is quite difficult. Also, so the same. Because we don't have any reliable customers who are coming to buy our pineapples. There will be only very few customers who are coming from Cobra Belt to come and buy our pineapples. Mm -hmm. 
So we are still facing a lot of challenges mm -hmm. at, at, at the time now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, Mr. Simeta, you have, you have persevered. You are the biggest farmer here in Kelenge. So how many hectares of uh, pineapple do you grow? Yeah, I have got uh, 25 hectares of pineapple mm -hmm. at now, yes. But I'm still expanding. Um, now, let's talk about the, um, the planting. How long does it take um, to, to grow? Is it true that actually it takes over a year to grow a, a pineapple? Uh, 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 according to these uh, plants, uh, the, the, the crown it takes uh, one year, eight months. One year, eight months, eight months yes, to grow this? To grow this. Now, the, the circus takes uh, one year, six months to bear a fruit. Okay. Yes. Okay, so which one is the sucker? Do you need to show me which one is the sucker? The sucker is this one, this is the sucker. Okay, so the sucker is, is without the fruit? Yes, without the okay. fruit. Okay, oh, that's yes. the sucker. And this is a, a crown mm -hmm. on top of the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also a slipper. This one is a slipper, called the slipper. Okay. This is beside the, the sucker. Uh -huh. So, um, what kind of fertilizer do you use on your on your pineapples? No, we don't use fertilizer, just organic farming. So the entire 25 hectares, no fertilizer, none at all on any of your pineapples? Yes, we don't use fertilizer. Can I taste it? Yeah, I can test it, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Maybe you can cut that yes, and we yes. can test it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks really juicy. Sure. That looks really juicy. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me a piece so okay. that you can test it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna taste this now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, my way up one. Masimeta, pineapple in a message. Huh? In a message. Sure, sure. This it's really yummy. It is very delicious. It is very succulent. The juices, can you imagine what will happen? I mean, how much we're going to enjoy all these pineapples when we start making them into juice, when we crush them and we make them into pulp and we actually have them made into, um, into little pieces, into little chips. You've just got to come and enjoy. You have to have this. This is really nice from Simeta Farm. But Simeta, you can see what you want. Money, money. But you can see another one. Money, money. And until we meet again, goodbye. Yeah, thank mm. you. Mm. 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 The perseverance of pineapple farmers like Mr. Sameta in the midst of unreliable market for their produce is one of the reasons that the IDC is setting up a factory in Winilunga. The factory is expected to be commissioned in the middle of this year. Well, that is our program for today. We want to thank you for watching. For more details, please do visit our website or our Facebook page. Bye-bye.